guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today I am here to walk through my January 2023 budget with you guys. Um, because of the timing of this video and when it's going up, I'm actually just filming a walkthrough of my budget. But typically when I film these videos, I am doing a budget with me style, which is basically I'm like setting it all up as I go with you guys and just filming it as I go. Um, again, because of timing and the fact that I wanted to get my budget done before January started, I'm just going to be going through and just explaining things as we go. So um, before we get started, let's start with like what we have in front of us. So this is an Erin Condren monthly planner. I've been using a monthly planner from Erin Condren for probably like four years now, I want to say. Um, basically, it is a seven by nine planner and it is just a bunch of lined pages with monthly views in between. So I personally like to use a monthly view to track my expenses, which you can see here. And then I like to use my budget stickers, which are available in my Etsy shop to put together a budget setup. Um, I know there's lots of different budget planners out there. I know some people like to budget on um, a computer and use a spreadsheet or an app. Personally, I am a really big paper and pen type of person. I like the feel of writing on paper and I feel like it just makes it a little bit more real for me. But I know and I acknowledge that it's not the only way to budget. So just putting that out there. So now that you know what I'm using, let's go ahead and walk through the month. So like I said, this is my monthly view. This is where I track all of my expenses. So something that I'm gonna be doing different in 2023 is I'm actually going to be using the monthly budget stickers, the expense tracking stickers to track expenses. So groceries are going to be in this peachy color. Um, this more medium blue is going to be eating out. The lighter blue is going to be household. And then the navy is going to be gas for our cars. I also use this little sidebar area to put down any important information that I need to know throughout the month. So we did get a preschool credit for Mila because her school is actually closed over the holidays. They had a pipe burst and flood the school. So we got a $94.93 credit. Um, so our payment was a little bit less. And then I actually also included some bill due stickers for our mortgage and for rent because those are two bills that I have to pay towards the end of the month. And I want to just make sure that I have those in there so I don't forget. I can check it off as I pay it. I do have it in my like normal planning um, setup as well, but I feel, feel like this will be a good thing to kind of see. The rent, by the way, is for the office space that we rent for the business. So um, I don't have like a house and like a separate place. Um, I just have a house and then this is for the business. Okay, so I did decide to put down a bill tracker. And what I want to do here is just track all of the different bills. We recently purchased a new house. I guess it hasn't been that recent, but in June we purchased a new house. And I feel like since we've moved, I'm a little bit uneasy about when certain things come due. We do keep quite a bit of a buffer in our checking account, basically just extra money so that we don't have to worry about like when money is coming in. We always have plenty in there to cover any bills that may come due. But just for my peace of mind, I want to have an idea of when things are due and try and figure out to get all of the bills coming to the house instead of like some come to the PO box, some come to the office. So anyway, I'm gonna be filling this in as bills come through. And then we have my budget set up. So I have my January budget here and right next to it, I always like to have my weekly check-in. My weekly check-in is just a place for me to check in like it like the term or the title says and just see how we're doing so i will be filming a weekly check-in very very soon for you guys but in terms of budget let me zoom in and i'll kind of go through everything for you guys so in terms of income, um, we have my income that comes from my Etsy shop and my YouTube videos and things like that. That's our main income. And then I did put an other, um, in this situation, like this month, the other could include the 
um, refund that we got from Mila School because that was something that we were not anticipating. Um, but yeah, those are the two incomes that we have. My husband, Jason, does work for my business. So, um, you know, he, we don't have a separate income for him. Then for variable expenses, electricity, I budgeted $150. Gas, I did 75 and then groceries, I did 875 which I believe is, and I, of course, I don't have my, um, I don't have my calculator near me, but I'm pretty sure that is 150 times 5, 750, what did I do there? Was it 175 maybe? 175 times 5. Yep, 175 times 5, 875. So there are five Monday or Tuesdays in January. So I'm budgeting 175 per week. Eating out, we're sticking with 300. We've done 300 for a long time, and that seems to work pretty good for us. Household, 150 for the month. Gas for our cars, 200. Cash dividers, 280. I've gotten a couple requests lately to do a cash dividers or cash envelope video. It's really boring, guys. The majority of that money, $220 of that money, is just mine and Jason's allowance. And then the other remaining $60, or I guess I said $220, so yeah, $60, is for like haircuts and waxing and thing like, things like that. Basically, I give Jason his $120 and I keep the rest for like my allowance and, and my waxing and stuff like that. Um, so it's basically me just splitting into into two and us taking our money. We don't have like specific cash envelope like setups or anything like that. I keep all the money in my wallet. Jason keeps his either in his wallet or he keeps them at home. So it's really boring and honestly that stays pretty much the same month to month. So I'm not planning on filming anything like that just because again we don't really have like dividers or cash envelopes anymore. Um, lashes 115 for the month. Sinking funds $2,185 and then unbudgeted we always do zero but I like to put a placeholder just in be just in case there is something that comes up that we weren't anticipating. Next mortgage under fixed expenses $2,500. I mentioned this before but this is us paying our mortgage off in half the amount of time um, that we like have our loan for. So um, in 2023 I would love to make a really big extra mortgage payment but because things are a little uncertain right now with the economy and things like that, I think what we're going to do is just continue doing the $2,500 and then at the end of the year, if we feel like we're in a good place, then we will make that extra payment. Um, internet is $55. Hulu Live is $69.99. Netflix is $19.99. Cell phones, our cell phones are $90 now a month. Um, me and Jason actually did upgrade our cell phones, so... Um, we both now have a 13 and said, Jason had like an, a seven plus, and then I had an 11. Um, so we got this really good deal where you just pay $5 per month, um, and you get a new phone. I did trade my phone in, so we should be getting a pretty large credit, which would pay for both mine and Jason's upgraded phones. So it may be more like $80, which is what it was before, but just waiting to see back what I get. Um, so we're going to leave it at 90 for now. Life insurance for myself is $42.55. I've mentioned this in the past, but when I decided to go full-time with Etsy and my sticker shop, I looked into life insurance for me and Jason. And unfortunately, because of Jason's heart condition, um, we weren't able to get life insurance on him. If he ever goes back to get like a full-time job outside of the business, we would hopefully be able to get some type of life insurance on him. A lot of companies have like an automatic life insurance, but for now, um, we do not have life insurance on him. We do have like an emergency fund and savings and things like that that would help cover if anything happened to Jason, but he is pretty much uninsurable um, unless he's with some type of group plan. The girls both have a 529 plan and we put $200 per girl into their 529 plan, so that's $400. Retirement, we put away $1,500 per month. Ortho is $195. Our ring doorbell is $3.99 per month, and then Mila's preschool is $1,234.05. 
I've had a lot of comments about the fact that it's one, two, three, four, five. I never noticed that until I had someone mention it. Um, and so because I have this as a fixed expense, what I'm going to do is consider that $94 as um, additional income and not like change this up. I like to keep this because to me, like this amount should be the same every single month. And I feel like it gets confusing if I change it because then if I refer back to it when I'm budgeting for February, it will just get really messy. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, so that is our budget for January. I'm going to show you guys some other pages as well. So I set up our sinking funds and I always like to set it up where I have my sinking fund and then my transaction log. Like I mentioned before, I keep track of my variable expenses in my monthly view. So these are going to be all the variable expenses. You saw, you saw all of these categories in my variable, um, my variable expense section of my budget. But for my sinking funds, what I'd like to do is have a separate section where I track all of those expenses just so it doesn't get too messy. When I'm finalizing everything um, and putting in what we spent and then what our ending balance is, is it's nice to see all of that information here. So um, let me just go through. Guys, our sinking funds are at an all-time low. We've had some pretty big expenses happening, and I'm going to talk through some of that because I feel like I didn't do a results video for December. It was just really hectic. We had so much going on. Um, so I'm just going to walk through some of the things that happened and talk about how we're handling it. So you probably noticed we have a lot of red here for our sinking funds. We do have a separate sinking fund checking account it all of these sinking funds are in that one account so the what i like to do is as long as this balance is positive i'm not super worried about making additional payments to our sinking funds the nice thing is a lot of the positive sinking funds can float the negative sinking funds for the time being most of these sinking funds are going to be positive once you add in what we added for january so kind of keep that in mind um Okay, so not much to talk about in terms of the first couple of categories. One thing that I wanted to mention is we did sign the kids up for a bunch of activities in December, and it was way more than what we had in our sinking fund category. So that is why that is zero right there. What I decided to do was I use some extra income that we had in December to cover the activities. So I used everything that we had in the activities category, and then anything that was like wasn't covered after we took into the into consideration our sinking funds I used out of our like savings for the month um, so that is why that is zero so we're starting off fresh um, it was just a lot because we signed up the girls for like an entire an entire like season like from January all the way until I think like June so it was a huge huge expense I'm hoping that going forward when we're signing the kids up for activities that will have plenty since we're adding in a hundred dollars but I just wanted to kind of bring that to your guys's attention Christmas we had a wild Christmas guys we had so much going on I feel like we were really generous which I love to do um, and we get like a double whammy or a triple whammy honestly because not only do we have Christmas but we have Mila's birthday on the 31st of December and then Macy's birthday on the 11th of January so it is like bam 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 all at once and of course like with presents and stuff and even like having parties and things we have like you know people over for Christmas and then we have um, presents for Christmas and then we have to have people over for Mila's birthday and presents for Mila's birthday and same thing with Macy we have a party for Macy and presents for Macy so um, we did end up doing the same type of situation that we did for activities with Christmas um, a lot of not a lot, but like a fair amount of expenses that we had that I knew were going to be above and beyond what we had in our sinking fund. I just covered using some extra savings that we had in December. Um, and you can see some of it, we're still negative 132. We added in 400, so we're positive now. But um, I still included some, more specifically from like Mila's birthday, I included here just because I didn't want to put like... I didn't want to use all of, well, I guess I just just decided that Christmas we would cover with some extra savings and then anything that we were um, over here would just be covered in January. So we do have Macy's birthday party coming up and we will be using 
the remaining balance here for that as well as I do have some credit card rewards that I'm planning on applying towards the party as well. So yeah, a lot there. Um, all of us have been going crazy with clothes. Um, Santa Claus brought the girls a bunch of clothes and things that they needed um, and so we used the clothes sinking fund for that. So we will be catching up but I think in terms of clothes, the girls are set. They got so much stuff from like family members and friends for Christmas. So um, I think we'll just continue to like add money to that and catch back up. Um, Costco, nothing exciting there. Entertainment and vacation, um, we're negative 79.31. We added 500. I do have a couple trips coming up. I mentioned this in the past, but I'm taking Macy to Disney for her birthday. She's kind of at that sweet age where like she's turning seven. I feel like she's been asking me about going to D Disney for a while and I feel like pretty soon she might get too old for it. So for her birthday, I decided to take her to Disney. It's going to be like a long weekend type of thing. It's just going to be me and Macy because honestly, Jason has no interest in Disney and Mila is too young in my opinion. Uh, my plan is when Mila turns seven, I'll do the same trip with her and just kind of have a one-on-one -on -one trip and I'm really excited about it. But um, most of the trips already paid for. We paid for the flights already and then we will have to play very soon for the actual like tickets and stuff like that. But that will be coming from savings as well because we're not going to have enough for that. Like this will float like, you know, food and you know, anything like that, but not the entire trip. Um, home maintenance, some fun stuff that happened with our home. This is kind of a funny story. We actually, um, one day it was really cold. We've had some really cold weather in Illinois and one day we had both cars in the garage because we were supposed to have a snowstorm and of course that day the garage door decided it didn't want to open. The motor is like the original motor. I think it's from like the 50s. <laughs> Um, and so it decided it didn't, didn't want to work. We already had some issues because we had no more garage door openers that would work and Jason couldn't figure out a way to get the garage door openers like that you can find at like Home Depot or Menards to pair with the old type of motor. So we were going to have someone come out anyway to just see if there was a way that you could do it. Um, and lo and behold, the garage door motor broke. So we had someone come out and fix that. So that was like $700 for the motor. We already had a brand new garage door that was included with the house when we purchased it. Um, but yeah, that was kind of eventful. So we do have one garage door opener now that was included with a new motor. Jason will have to go and purchase a new one, but um, that is why we are negative. We were catching back up because we had some stuff go on. I think we bought a new, like a sub pump backup for our sub pump. And that was a large expense that we purchased like a few months ago. And then of course now the garage door opener. So we've had kind of a busy month in December and I feel like we'll be catching up for a couple months now, but hopefully nothing too extreme is happening um, for the rest of the month and all of that. So that is my budget for January of 2023. If you guys have not already checked out my 2023 budget setups, I definitely recommend doing it. I do have a whole playlist. Um, setting those up ahead of time make this so much easier because I referred to those pages as I was creating my budget just to get an idea of like, okay, what should I be including? Um, is there anything I'm missing? Things like that. So I'm really excited to finally be in the new planner. I feel like I have a lot more room than the old planner and I'm just excited to have a fresh start. So let me know if you guys have set up your January budget already. Do you feel like if you did do the 2023 budget setups, do you feel more prepared? I know I do personally. Um, but anyway, that is it for me today. I need to head home and get my little girl from school, but I just wanted to really quickly film this overview of my budget so you guys would see where we're starting out as. And then um, I, like I said, will be filming some videos where I talk about how we're doing for the month with my weekly check-ins. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.